The name recognition of the US dollar is not because it's somehow innately better than other currencies, but because of its unique status as the most dominant reserve currency of the world. The term reserve currency is thrown around a lot, and it's one of those terms that most people use without knowing what it really means. So at the expense of a few seconds, I'd like to define what it means. Let's take two countries to better illustrate the point. Chile and Australia, the biggest exporters of copper and wool. If Australia and Chile wanted to buy each other's commodities on the international market, they would either have to use the archaic barter system, where they exchange a certain amount of wool for copper that's proportional to its value, or use money as we know it to trade. The bartering system is only ideal on a small scale, but when there are thousands of different commodities that need to swap hands, keeping account of each and everything is a hemorrhoid in the ass. So a better way to trade is to use money. But whose currency do you trade in when it comes to two countries that use entirely different currencies? That's where reserve currency steps in to save the day. It's a currency stable enough for every country to have faith in. Faith in the value of the currency to retain its value over time. Let's say you had the Zimbabwean dollar as a reserve currency prior to 2009 and you were stockpiling the currency by selling goods in return for the Zimbabwean dollar. But all of a sudden, the currency experiences hyperinflation to a point where a $1,000 Zimbabwean note is worth less than the paper it's printed on, never mind having any buying power left. To prevent a scenario as dire as that, you'd want to have a currency that's resilient to devaluation or any significant fluctuation in its price. While no country can guarantee that its currency will stand the test of time, the only option left is to pick the one that is most likely to stand its ground against any economic calamities. So this is where the US dollar in all its might takes on the challenge. The United States is and has been the biggest economy in the world for the last century. And it also happens to have the most ferocious military arsenal backing its currency. These reasons give other countries the faith that the United States will be able to defend the dollar from any potential fluctuations that might occur from unforeseen uncertainties. Contrary to popular belief, a reserve currency doesn't just have to be one currency. In 2023, there are in fact two major reserve currencies dominating the balance sheet of central banks of all countries. The infamous old Benjamin takes up 60% of the total assets on the balance sheet of the world's reserves, while the inferior euro takes up a meager 20%. And the last 20% is shared between various countries that have not yet earned the worth for me to list them off one by one. Obviously kidding, but there are too many to individually name. In recent years, there's been a lot of speculation about the US dollar falling off from its throne. And the speculations aren't completely baseless. The recent US leaderships have taken for granted that it's the only country that gets to call the shots. People at the very top of the US government have pushed their limits on what is reasonable for them to do with all the power accumulated over the course of centuries through meticulous strategy. To lay out the groundwork for a better understanding of the situation, you need to understand how international transactions work. Every country has multiple independent banks that their citizens use. When a person from country A wants to sell their finished product to a person from country B, it's very likely that they have two different banks that they are signed up with. In order for their bank transaction to go through, they would need to rely on a third party system that connects the two banks and helps complete the transaction. That third party entity is called the SWIFT network. This system of intra-country banking is widely used by around 200 countries to do business. Now that you understand what the SWIFT system is, you have to realize how essential it is for international transactions related to both exports and imports. So for any country to not be able to take advantage of the SWIFT system, will have a lot to lose. And that's how a country like Russia was punished after the war in Ukraine. The US, along with its allies, chose to bar Russia from participating in SWIFT and at the same time froze $600 billion of Russian money that was offshore in Western banks. Regardless of what side of the Russian-Ukraine debate you fall on, this overreach of power by the US was a huge blow to the confidence of countries like China and Saudi Arabia in continuing to rely on the US dollar for their trade. You see, these countries aren't entirely known for upholding international laws and human rights issues. So the message they received from the reaction by Washington to the Ukrainian war was that if these countries did something in the future that the United States was opposed to, the US would not hesitate to wield their cudgel of currency dominance against them. Look, the world isn't fair and it doesn't matter if what the US did was morally right or wrong. The way other countries received it was that if you don't play by the rules set by the West, you're going to be severely punished. Russia knew that the US would do something like this, so they had already switched from using the dollar to other currencies to sell their oil and valuable minerals to other countries. And with the expulsion of Russia from the SWIFT network, they were forced to adopt a completely new way of trading with the world that didn't have the influence of Western countries. Now, among other countries, Saudi Arabia is going to join Iran and Russia in ditching the US dollar for the Chinese Yuan to sell their oil to China. If this is any indication of what's to come, it's the beginning of the end of the supremacy of the mighty dollar. And China is doing everything it can to capitalize on the major foreign policy blunders the US has made in the recent decades.
it's well known among Western intelligence agencies that China is preparing itself for the day when it strikes Taiwan and leaves the West unable to retaliate in any significant manner because of a lack of any dependency on the US dollar. As you watch this video, you're witnessing a different world being emerged with the rise of Asia-centric powerhouse that is China in the East on one side and the downfall of the West on the other. For all the faults of the West, of which there are many, it's still the better of the two evils. So it's not the best to be rooting for its demise because that would mean the end of the world as we know it. With the formation of the BRICS Accord, which is an alliance between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, among other countries. The world is forming alliances to the deliberate exclusion of the West. And what's worse is that it's the Chinese Communist Party that's the arbiter of setting the terms for these new alliances. It's the classic case of one having everything to lose and the other having everything to gain. There are predictions by analysts of a new power dynamics emerging in the next decade. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few years. If things continue to go the way they have been for the last few years, we're going to find ourselves in a world that's alien to what we are used to seeing. For every passing year, America is hemorrhaging its influence. If you're still not convinced of the dollar losing its prestigious status, let me list off a few more reasons that should help you understand the severity of the situation. The US dollar has been losing its value relative to other currencies, especially the euro, the yen, and the pound. This is partly due to several reasons, such as its large trade deficit, its fiscal deficit, and public debt, all of which have been exasperated by the stimulus spending during the pandemic. The US has also been facing political and social instabilities, as well as declining trust in its institutions and leadership. The extreme polarization of the American populace has raised doubts about the strength of the American democracy and its ability to deal with domestic challenges. Now, the biggest reason I think the US is on a downward trajectory is that the US has been lagging behind China in some key areas of innovation and development, such as artificial intelligence, biotechnology, renewable energy, and infrastructure. The US has also been struggling with issues such as the younger generation being more inclined to choose a path of celebrity rather than STEM fields. This is especially worsened by the TikTok culture, where it gets even more sinister on the part of the Chinese government, as they block out brain dumbing content on their version of the app, yet algorithmically boost the dumb shit to be shown to people across other countries. If I were a betting man, I would go all out on China as emerging the next superpower. And you bet the world will be far less free when that happens. And with that, you reach the end of the video. I also want to acknowledge that this is kind of a controversial video, so I'm genuinely curious about what your take is on the whole issue. Look, I'd like to be challenged on my opinions down in the comments. If you have a good argument, please go right ahead. Alright, with that, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.